The never-ending story of the Northern Ireland Protocol dispute continues, but who expected something else? Boris Johnson is more than welcome to have this distraction, I'm quite sure about this. So, another week of Brexit negotiations on Friday left the European Union waiting for a firm counter-proposal from the United Kingdom to ease a stalemate over how to deal with the country's exit from the Union. Both sides argue over differences in how trade is regulated in Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK, but also part of the EU's vast internal market, in a Byzantine deal that proved essential in the Brexit divorce negotiations. Both sides recognize that the agreement is far from perfect and have negotiated how the movement of goods from Great Britain to Northern Ireland can be improved without giving London unhindered access to the market of the 27-nation EU. While EU Brexit negotiator Maro Sefcovic said there was a change of tone for the better in London, he added that the EU compromise proposal last month to cut red tape between Great Britain and Northern Ireland needed a reply. He said, it is important that the recent change of tone now leans to joint tangible solutions. And he said that after a meeting with his British counterpart, David Frost. And he said, we haven't made any substantial progress yet. No, that's what Frost admitted when it comes to customs and controls and, for example, on animal transports. They'll meet again in London next week. Negotiations have dragged on for over a month and Britain is threatening to suspend parts of the legally binding divorce deal between the two sides if the solution is not found soon. Frost said triggering an emergency clause known as Article 16 remains a real possibility. If we cannot negotiate positions on the problems in Northern Ireland, then there are Article 16 safeguards, he said. Article 16 allows both sides to suspend parts of the Brexit agreement in extreme circumstances. An attempt by the UK to use it would spark retaliation by the EU and could lead to a trade war between the 27-nation union and its increasingly alienated former member. Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom and borders on EU member Ireland. As part of the Brexit deal agreed before Britain left the EU in late 2020, it will remain within the Union's duty-free internal market for goods to ensure there is an open border on the island of Ireland, a key pillar of Northern Ireland peace processes. This created a new customs border for goods in the Irish Sea, entering Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK, even though they belong to the same country. It has also created bureaucracy for business and angered the British Unionists in Northern Ireland who say the Czechs are undermining Northern Ireland's place in the UK and destabilizing the delicate political balance on which peace is based. The trade relations between Great Britain and Northern Ireland would be eaten away by the rules after Brexit with the EU, says Lord David Frost, British Brexit Minister. But try to find the data to prove it. Official Northern Ireland state uh, trade statistics end in 2019. At a conference, media attended shortly after um, this summer, I guess, an audience of academics, diplomats and civil services uh, grow as the subject of Northern Ireland's patchy economic data came up. Business people described being sent between departments in search of seemingly impossible to extract information about an economy that was once famous for the Titanic and linen industry and now focuses on agriculture, construction and manufacturing. But the lack of up-to-date data on exports and imports seem particularly strange, not least because of the prospect of a trade war with Brussels over the UK's demands to rewrite the rules for Northern Ireland. Frost has for now wrote back when he first fired uh, his first volley, which triggered Article 16, or to trigger Article 16 of the Northern Ireland Protocol post-Brexit, a clause, as I said, that allows both sides to suspend key parts of the deal if it is viewed as serious economic damage or distraction of trade. But he has made it clear that the opinion is still open if Brussels refuses to give in to its demands for major concessions. Wouldn't it be terrible to trigger Article 16 and find out that there wasn't a difference if all the justification was that it was affecting trade? You would have X on your face, but the damage would be done. Northern Ireland's unique
Post-Brexit access to both the UK internal market and the EU internal market is seen by Brussels as a significant benefit for the tiny region of 1.9 million people, which exported 11.3 billion pounds in goods to the UK in 2019 and only 5 billion to Ireland and 2.4 billion to the rest of the UK. According to official figures released in Ireland, the Republic's imports from Northern Ireland rose 60% between January and September compared to the same period last year. But real-time data on trade between Northern Ireland and mainland Britain is more difficult to come by. Economists need to compose information from ports and, and other sources. The lack of official figures is frustrating, but not the fault of Belfast's small statistics agency, the NISRA. After all, Northern Ireland is much smaller in both population and economy than major UK metropolitan areas like Greater Manchester. And we even don't know how much Man Manchester trades with London or County Donegal trades with Dublin. So to stay up to date on those developments is quite a problem. And initiative launched this week by the Irish think tank Economic and Social Research Institute and the UK's National Institute of Economic and Social Research will model economic statistics across the island of Ireland to help make policy decisions. But it will take numbers. In Northern Ireland it appears that too many areas are either lagging or missing data and even experts say this. And even the experts from their own statistics office that do say this. But they even don't understand the reason for this. And it's absolutely difficult to make database decisions without data. And um, very, very often the data exists somewhere, but statistical agencies may not regularly publish the more obscure data. In fact, some models created a market for some mon uh, numbers of the Irish Bureau of Statistics, predicting the same could happen in Northern Ireland. There is a lot of data being con collected, but uh, neither NISRA or the UK's Office for National Statistics have some kind of network work presentation approach. The region's statistic statisticians, is it, I guess, defend their results, saying that trade data depends on an annual survey. And more recent figures for 2020 will be published on December 15th. When it comes to data collection and analysis, the Brexit uncertainty is exhausting enough. As one Northern Irish econom economic figure put it, you don't want to wait 18 months to find out there's a problem. Or that there is none. And at the moment it looks that Northern Ireland, and that's what business people in Northern Ireland tell Mauro Sefcovic, Northern Ireland is benefiting from the current regulations. I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.